Howdy folks, hope you all had a great weekend, and welcome to another episode of Mingles with Jingles. And there's a fair bit to talk about this week, so I guess we're going to crack straight on. And the first piece of news that I noted while browsing all of the usual PC gaming news websites is to do with Resident Evil 4, or the Resident Evil 4 Remake, a game that I didn't even know existed. So, <laughs> this one took me completely by surprise. I mean, I played the Resident Evil 2 Remake, and it was great. Uh, same with the Resident Evil 3 remake. Um, Resident Evil 4? I have no idea. But the remake is out, and apparently that's not all that's out. There's some new DLC that's out as well. And it's here, of course, where things get a little bit... Hmm. Is The Resident Evil series, or at least the Resident Evil remake series, have always been shining examples of how to do a remake without stuffing in a ton of microtransactions in order to try to milk every last penny out of your customers. Until now. You see, it turns out that you can now buy tickets that can be used in-game to upgrade your weapons. You can pay to have better weapons. Now, you, you can upgrade the weapons to this kind of standard just by playing the game. You don't have to pay for it, but now the option is there for you to pay for it as part of this latest downloadable content and I'm not really quite sure how I feel about this because it's not a multiplayer you know player versus player game it is a single player survival horror game so does it really matter if you're just paying for a shortcut to upgrade your weapons eh, I don't know I mean the jury's out on that one the part that does disappoint me though is that this DLC dropped after the game had been reviewed now, that is awfully suspicious. Oh, Capcom. <laughs> and, and you'd been doing so well up until now. Because I suspect if the game had launched in its reviewable state with the ability to spend money on what are effectively shortcuts, it might have affected the review scores. Oh, Capcom. You so silly. I mean, it's still apparently a very good game. And like I said, it's it's not like it's a player versus player game and you're paying to get an advantage over other players. I mean, you are getting an advantage over other players, but it doesn't matter because it only affects you. So, yeah, like I said, eh. Anyway, moving on. It will surprise absolutely nobody to hear that Blizzard is at it again. <laughs> I say Blizzard. It is, of course, Blizzard Activision. Um, so... Overwatch 1.1, or the game that Blizzard are calling Overwatch 2, um, they fixed a bug. Except it wasn't a bug. <laughs> it was... Okay, let me explain what I'm talking about. Honestly, this is pretty funny. So, amongst a whole list of bug fixes in the latest patch for Overwatch 2, there was this, and I quote, Fixed a bug that allowed Ash to gain ultimate while B.O.B. was active. So this is the official patch notes for the upcoming Season 4 update. Now, what's so strange about that? That's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked. Four years ago, in 2019, there was a patch for Overwatch where buried amongst the patch notes was this bug fix. Fixed a bug where Ash wasn't gaining ultimate charge while B.O.B. existed. <laughs> so, four years ago... Blizzard proudly announced that they'd fixed the fact that this certain character wasn't gaining her ultimate charge while a certain condition was active, and then four years later, they proudly announced that they fixed the bug <laughs> where this character was gaining ultimate charge while a certain condition existed. It's like, left hand, left hand, this is right hand, radio check, radio check. How do you read me over? <laughs> Hello, left hand, left hand, anybody there? <laughs> this is right hand, we have no idea what we're doing. Uh, please respond that we're just going to go ahead and do whatever the hell we like. Multi-billion dollar company, by the way. <laughs> anyway, moving on swiftly. Anyway, another week, another leak of classified military documents, and just for once it wasn't War Thunder's fault. Reading here from the PC Gamer News website, the documents in question are related to US and NATO plans to support Ukraine's military effort against the ongoing Russian invasion, and according to Bellingcat researcher Arik Tola, an early leak point 
was an unofficial Minecraft Discord server. Uh, some of the leaked documents eventually found their way to 4chan, where, in classic internet fashion, they were being shared in order to win an argument. <laughs> oh, 4chan, never change. <laughs> Uh, the 4chan documents appear to contain estimates of Ukrainian and Russian losses in the war and a map of the contested city of Bakhmut. The documents were also shared on Russian telegram channels, although according to Tolo, the Bakhmut map was not included among them. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing the name of the city. I've only ever seen it written down and not said. Uh, there were also two different sets of estimates, one indicating that Ukrainian combat losses are much lower than those of Russia and then an edited image showing them as much higher. Uh, Tola said on Twitter that 4chan was probably not the actual source of the leak, although it would be extremely funny if it was. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, after that, he said that an earlier version of the leak came from an even dumber source, which he told uh, was a Minecraft Discord server. This archive had even more images, including maps of Kharkiv and Kherson and another equipment page. But it later became apparent that another Discord server was the actual leak point. A Discord user named Luca claimed to have found an archive of more than 100 classified files on a now-deleted Discord server and posted more than 30 of them to a YouTuber's Discord server over the beginning of March. On the 4th of March, 10 of those files were posted to a Minecraft Discord, and then in early April, 3 ended up on 4chan, and 5 were posted on Russian Telegram channels. Now, unlike the War Thunder leaks of the past, which were unlawful and theoretically punishable by death if you leaked them in China, and somebody did, uh, this leak includes information on an, unex sorry, on an expected Ukrainian counteroffensive against Russian forces. The documents don't have specific details on the plan, and as they're more than a month old, they may be even out of date at this point, but they do contain useful intelligence, such as the rate at which Ukrainian forces are using up HIMARS ammunition, which hasn't previously been disclosed. And as the New York Times said, the leak represents a significant breach of American intelligence. Pentagon is now investigating the leak. Uh, Luca who reportedly first found the leaked documents and shared them on Discord where they started to spread, is preparing for the worst. Um, yeah, another week, another leak of classified military documents. Or is it? Honestly, at this point, I don't even know, because for all I know, this could just be disinformation. I mean, let's face it, both Russia and Ukraine have been making extremely good use of social media and the internet to fight the propaganda war, and it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. I mean, this may be a genuine leak, but it also may be Ukrainian disinformation. Honestly, at this point, it's basically impossible to say. But it certainly wouldn't be the first time somebody had done something like this in order to feed false information to the enemy. In World War I, there was the famous Zimmermann telegram, which detailed uh, a plan for Germany to ally with Mexico in order to keep America busy and out of World War I, which of course had the exact opposite effect. In World War II, there was a fantastic example of disinformation that worked too well. Uh, has anybody ever heard of Operation Camilla? Okay, so I suspect probably not. I don't even know why I bother asking, because I'm going to explain it anyway. So Operation Camilla was the brainchild of a Lieutenant Colonel Dudley Clark of the British Army. And it was an operation designed to deceive the Italians into making them believe that the British planned to reconquer British Somaliland in East Africa with the 4th and 5th Indian divisions, which had been transferred from Egypt to the Sudan. Now, in order to support this deception, um, he arranged for the Italian defences to be softened up by air and sea raids and distributed maps and pamphlets on the climate, geography and population of British Somaliland. Bogus information was planted on the Japanese consul at Port Said, in the full knowledge, of course, that the Japanese consul would send this information straight to Germany and the Germans would send it straight to the Italians. Um, indiscreet radio messages were broadcast in the clear regarding the logistics and build-up of uh, the 4th and 5th Indian divisions prepping for the reconquering of British Somaliland. And all of this stuff worked very, very well. The Italians were convinced in 1941 that the British army was going to invade and reconquer Somalia, when in fact the real attack was coming to the north in Eritrea, or I believe modern-day Ethiopia. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, 
while it worked, um, they failed to take into account who it was they were deceiving. These were the Italians, not the Germans. If it had been the Germans, the Germans would have reinforced Somaliland. But it was the Italians, so they instead evacuated Somaliland <laughs> and moved all their forces north to Eritrea, where the real attack was coming. Now, it, it wasn't a complete disaster. <laughs> For a couple of reasons, one of which was that, uh, well, part of the deception involved misleading wireless transmissions, uh, leading the Italians to believe that two Australian divisions were poised to attack from Kenya, which led to them reinforcing the wrong area. Um, but, you know, it still, well, the other reason is it was the Italians, so we won anyway. <laughs> but, I'm sorry, Italy, but... While it's true that you did have some fine uh, armoured divisions in particular in World War II, the Centauro Division uh, acquitted itself very well in North Africa. In general, <laughs> your military adventures in World War II weren't very successful. Due to a whole number of reasons, mostly Mussolini's wildly ambitious plans, um, lack of resources out-of-control corruption that ensured that the limited resources that were available to your military never ended up going to the places where they were needed and instead ended up lining the uh, pockets of your logistics officers. It was, uh, it was just one big shit show from start to finish. So don't take it too hard, but the fact that the deception plan worked so well that it caused you to actually reinforce the area <laughs> where the real attack was coming and yet you're still lost. <laughs> <laughs> Probably isn't going to come as a great surprise to anybody. There was another famous British deception operation of World War II. Have you ever heard of Operation Mincemeat? It was to do with the Allied invasion of Sicily in 1943. And a recent movie was made entitled Operation Mincemeat. Unfortunately, the movie starring Colin Firth uh, made it sound as if the entire success or failure of the invasion of Sicily hinged on the successful outcome of Operation Mincemeat, which was bullshit. But that's Hollywood for you. Uh, it was just part of a greater deception plan to make Germany believe, and Italy as well, obviously, because, you know, Sicily, uh, that the actual invasion was coming in Greece, when in fact Sicily was the target all along. Uh, this involves taking the body of uh, a vagrant who had died from eating rat poison, apparently, uh, dressing him up in the uniform of a Royal Marine officer and concocting a false identity for him, um, making him the completely fictitious Captain William Martin, um, planting documents on the body and then dumping it so it would wash up ashore in Spain, where it would be discovered, obviously, by the Spanish. And while Spain was technically neutral in World War II, it was under the control of uh, General Franco, who was a fascist and very, very sympathetic to Germany. And naturally, the documents and the body were passed along to German military intelligence, the Abwehr, and Ultra Intercepts later confirmed that the Germans had fallen for it. They moved reinforcements to Greece and Sardinia, and none to Sicily. Of course, the recent movie of the same name would have you believe that this one single deception operation was single-handedly responsible for the successful invasion of Sicily, when, of course, it was just a small part of a much, much grander deception operation. But it was a small part that absolutely, definitely worked. Here's the interesting thing about Operation Mincemeat, though. Um, the proposal for the operation came from the office of Rear Admiral John Godfrey, who was the Director of Naval Intelligence. And while the paper detailing the proposal for the operation was published under Rear Admiral Godfrey's name, historian Ben McIntyre observed that although the paper was published under the Admiral's name, it bore all the hallmarks of Lieutenant Commander Ian Fleming, Godfrey's personal assistant. Ian Fleming, of course, the author of the James Bond novels, who worked in British naval intelligence during World War II, no stranger to the spy game, and whom it is very likely was the actual author of the deception plan. It's a funny old world, isn't it? In other news, and we're back to Activision again, uh, uh, this is actually quite good. So, if you've ever played Call of Duty, you'll know that they have an anti-cheat system in there called Ricochet. And it apparently does a fairly good job of identifying and banning cheating 
Call of Duty Warzone players, but it doesn't always ban them. Sometimes it likes to play with them. <laughs> so there's a video up, I'll put a link to it, um, of one of the features that Ricochet can do if it catches you cheating at Call of Duty Warzone. Uh, the video shows the disarm effect, but there are two others as well. Uh, there's one called Damage Shield, which disables the cheater's ability to inflict critical damage on other players, so no matter what they do, they can never score a kill. Um, and there's another one called Cloak, that basically makes all enemy players invisible. What Disarm does, which is what you can see happening in the video that I linked, is, well, it does exactly what the name would suggest. When you try to swap weapons, it just disarms you instead. <laughs> so you see in the video, uh, somebody's too close in order to successfully use their sniper rifle, so they, they try to switch to their sidearm, and instead they just put all their weapons away, <laughs> leaving them completely vulnerable uh, to the person that they were trying to take out. And I think this is hilarious. And I think it's hilarious that Activision's in-game anti-cheating system is actually doing this. I'm just wondering if it's drawn its inspiration from a different source, because while this is an official in-game anti-cheating system that is basically trolling cheaters, it's not the first thing to do so. As a YouTuber, and again I'll put a link to his channel because it's hilarious, who goes by the name of Script Kid. And what Script Kid is famous for doing, and I do mean famous because the video that I'm linking to has 5.2 million views and 356,000 likes, is he's developed a cheat software. Wait, wait, no, don't go anywhere. Wait for it. This is going to be good. He's developed a cheat software for Counter-Strike Global Offensive that isn't actually cheat software. Instead, it trolls the cheaters. So he developed this software and then he developed a website where you could go to to download the software and then he paid his own money to Google uh, to sponsor this website because you can do that. If you've ever seen when you've typed a search term into Google, um, there are a number of sponsored results that appear first at the top of the search list. Yeah, that's what he did. For anybody who typed Counter-Strike Global Offensive or CSGO Cheats into Google, his website appeared at the top of the list. And then he sat back and watched as thousands and thousands of dirty scumbag cheaters downloaded what they thought was cheat software for CSGO. And there are all kinds of things that this cheat software actually does, none of which helps the cheaters. <laughs> so, for example, there's the Burning Man option, um, where when you try to throw a grenade, what actually happens is, at the moment of throwing, you'd instead drop the grenade at your feet, and then the software unbinds your movement keys for a few seconds. <laughs> so the grenade goes off at your feet, and you can't move away from it. So that's nice. The next thing that this cheat software does is called the no plant or defuse punishment. So what happens there is anytime you're trying to plant or defuse a bomb, well, when you try to plant the bomb, it will go through the whole lengthy process of planting the bomb, but then it will cancel at the last second and play a fake sound effect saying the bomb has been planted when the bomb has not, in fact, been planted. But what's better is when you try to defuse the bomb. <laughs> Because it will do the same thing, <laughs> except in reverse. It will go through the whole lengthy bomb defusal process and then cancel at the last second, but will play a fake bomb has been defused sound effect when, in fact, it hasn't been defused and you're standing next to a very live bomb that's about to go off. Then there's the big spender punishment, um, which during the first buying round of the match, it will waste all of your money by buying all the worst weapons. <laughs> Another punishment is called No Spray For You, where any time the cheater is holding down the fire button on an automatic weapon and just spraying and praying, there's a 50% chance they will drop all of their weapons. <laughs> there's another one that's very simple but very effective. It's called the Invert Mouse ADS Punishment. So whenever you're aiming down your sights using a scope, your mouse gets inverted. <laughs> so up becomes down, left becomes right. Oh. He also has the cheat software distribute invisible sort of tripwire zones around the map because the software knows 
exactly where the cheetah is at any given time. So you don't see these tripwire zones, but any time you walk into them, any number of different things can happen. Like, make you suddenly jump up and down for a few seconds while turning your mouse sensitivity up to 100. <laughs> or another thing that can happen when you walk across one of these invisible uh, tripwire zones is the butterfingers effect, which makes you throw your weapon away every time you try to fire. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, I do encourage you to check out the video in the link and just see all the really cruel and unusual punishments this guy's come up with. But the best part is that these are all detailed in the end user license agreement, <laughs> which he makes everybody agree to before they can install and run the cheat software. And what it also does, and the reason why you can see it all happening on his YouTube channel, is it grants permission when you accept the end user license agreement to send your replay files to him. <laughs> so in effect, he's not just trolling the cheaters, but he's doing it with their permission. <laughs> so that's Script Kid on YouTube. I'm definitely putting a link uh, to his YouTube channel because it's absolutely hilarious. Anyway, that's it for today. There was more that I wanted to talk about, but I think we're going to wait until next week. Um, in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's given you plenty to laugh about, talk about, and think about. And if you do want to talk about it, well, that's what the comment section is for. Let's see what you think down there. Um, should more companies introduce troll anti-cheat software like this, following the lead of uh, Activision's Call of Duty Warzone anti-cheat software Ricochet, which was almost certainly inspired by the antics of Script Kid on YouTube. And that's not a bad thing. Anyway, let us know what you think. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.